You know what this is, don't you? It's a phonograph, considered a miracle of the time when your grandfather was alive. In 1910, he might have known a man like Jonathan Sharp. Jonathan, with many others of the early 20th century, was thrilled by the wonderful machines and inventions he had seen in his lifetime. Never in history had inventions come so fast. In one 40-year period, the phonograph, the telephone, the electric lamp, and many other inventions changed the way people live. In the big cities, skyscrapers of steel pushed higher and higher. People called this the age of miracles. Sometimes the skyscrapers reminded Jonathan of how much life had changed from the frontier days. As history goes, that was not very long before. In 1850, Jonathan lived on a wheat farm when people called Illinois the West. In those days, it took all a man's strength to reap the harvest by hand. Then, a marvelous machine came to the wheat fields. Jonathan was only 10 years old, but he remembers what changes the machine brought. Wheat became cheaper. More people could afford to buy bread. To carry crops and other things, Railroads spread their tracks across our country from ocean to ocean. And the railroads carried Jonathan, after he grew up, from the farm into the big city. Jonathan's home in the city had to be close to his job. He worked such long hours. Home was comfortable, but life was plain. In the 1870s, under the flickering kerosene lamps in the evening, someone could read from the Bible. Sometimes there was a piano for entertainment. Travel was hard, so you wrote letters to distant friends instead of going to visit. If they lived close by, you could walk or ride if you could manage one of those high wheel bicycles made of steel. Steel was being used more and more. Steel rails carried you to work in the horse-drawn cars. Jonathan's work was on a big scientific magazine which reported on new inventions and their spread through our country. There was a young inventor who liked to visit here. Thomas Edison was already famous when one day in 1877 he brought in a machine but didn't say very much about it. Who could keep from turning that little crank just to see what would happen? In the years that followed, Edison and other inventors improved the phonograph. Some put the sound on a disc instead of a cylinder. The telephone brought another wonderful sound into people's homes. In the early 1870s, one of the men who worked on it was Alexander Graham Bell, a teacher of deaf children. After years of experimenting, in 1876, at the great Philadelphia Exposition, Mr. Bell demonstrated his telephone. Jonathan was there and heard it... To be or not to be, that is the question. People were amazed, and they began to realize how wonderful it would be to talk to someone at a distance. In Jonathan's business, they had one of the first telephones. At first, hooked only to another phone in the print shop. It saved all sorts of time. Soon, other men invented switchboards to connect different telephones together. Businesses used more and more phones. And more wires were needed in cities. Cities that grew bigger partly because of the telephone. So, in time, telephones came to be much improved. This piece was another invention of Edison. 
Edison, who in his laboratories of Menlo Park, New Jersey, used to work on hundreds of inventions. The most important was no magic discovery. It came from years of hard work and experiment. It was the world's first practical incandescent or glowing lamp. The lamp was only part of a whole electric power system invented by Edison about 1880. This included new generators to make the electricity, of which this is a model. The smelly oil lamps and dangerous gas lamps gave way to a safer, brighter, cleaner light. This was the beginning of widespread use of electricity. Electric streetcars could move through the cities without even a horse to pull them. There were electric elevated and subway trains. Some of the early automobiles were electric too, and some were steam. But the really practical cars were driven by gasoline engines based on designs from Germany and France. One of them was made by a young mechanic named Henry Ford, working at night in the shed back of his home. The most important thing that Henry Ford invented was the idea that cars should be built in quantity and cheap enough so anyone could own one. Shortly after 1900, many different companies started to make automobiles. But Ford built more than any of them. He helped to start one of the greatest industries of our country. Jonathan found that the motor car made his living easier. People could get around to work and to visit, even to places away from the railroad tracks. An even faster way to travel was the new aeroplane. What a way to launch the 20th century. In Dayton, Ohio, Orville and Wilbur Wright made bicycles. And they were learning how to make aeroplanes. They built the first wind tunnel to study air movement. And then, here's Wilbur Wright, seen by another outstanding invention of the times, the motion picture camera. People said it was not possible to fly through the air. Many men had tried. Some had been killed. But some of the things they learned helped the Wright brothers to succeed in 1903. Planes that fly through the air. And Jonathan has been reading about messages through the air. The wireless telegraph. The Italian, Marconi, after years of experimenting, at the age of 26, put his wireless apparatus to a supreme test. In 1901, in Newfoundland, Marconi flew a kite that held up the antenna, and he heard a code signal from England clear across the ocean. Later, Radio tubes helped make these signals a million times stronger. Amplifier tubes, invented by Lee DeForest, made possible radio. Sound over the air without wires. Many scientists in Europe and America helped make this miracle. Yes, Jonathan's time was unequaled in history. Great inventions came so fast. Edison's phonograph giving records of music and voices. Bell's telephone, carrying voices over wires. Edison's electric lamp and power systems lighting the world. And how much better the travel because of Ford and all those automobile pioneers. And the Wright brothers and those who conquered the air. The wonder of messages in the air. Marconi and the wireless. De Forest and the radio tube, and others. And one man could see it happen in about 40 years of his life. Is it any wonder that even then, 
people called this the age of miracles.